if you want to be naked in a bath of chocolate, then this isn't it, but this is maybe close enough. So, yeah. I'm just starting out with three five inch cake pans and I'm tracing the bottom with baking paper. I'll then cut out six pieces for the rounds and I'll also cut out some collars for the sides of the tins. Once they're cut out, I'll spray some oil in the tins and then I will put the paper in the tins accordingly. So starting off, I'm going to make cake. I'll have all of the measurements in the description box below. But I start with my cubed butter. I'll chuck them in the microwave until they're nice and melted. I've also got dark chocolate chips. Um, I like to have these ones here that are a bit smaller rather than blocks of cooking chocolate. I just find them easier. I've also got my caster sugar. I try to use caster sugar for this. Um, the granules are smaller. And then I've got my water. Once the butter is semi-melted, um, I will then chuck in the chocolate, chuck in the sugar, and then chuck in the water. Um, but it wasn't giving me the consistency that I wanted, so I then transferred it all towards the end of this in a saucepan. But for now, I'm adding in roughly two tablespoons of coffee. This is going to give a rich flavor. That's just the instant stuff you either can. So doesn't have to be like an espresso shot or anything. Anywho, I'm just adding in the sugar probably one third at a time. Kind of goes a bit sludgy. Um, probably best to just put all of this in a saucepan to begin with. I kind of screwed up a little bit, but that's all right. So I've just chucked it in a big saucepan and then I'll chuck it on low heat. I then put the water in now just to kind of thin it out a little bit, but you do want to melt it to a nice smooth consistency and then leave it to cool. So take it off the heat and chuck it on the side. So now that the wet ingredients are out of the way, I'm going to prepare my dry. So I've got my two types of flour, my self-raising and plain, and I've got a nice sieve. Just going to sieve them into my KitchenAid bowl. Of course, you can mix this by hand, but I just love my KitchenAid, so I'll just roll with that. And you also need cocoa powder as well, being a chocolate cake kind of makes sense. And I will then put my wet ingredients into the dry once they are really quite relatively cool and give it a quick mix. We don't want to cook the eggs when we put them in by having a hot chocolatey mess. So give it a quick scrape down. I am using my paddle attachment and then I will put in my already beaten eggs with some vanilla essence and look how fucking cute that bowl is. Like it doesn't even make sense but I love it. So I'll chuck them all in while um, having the speed up quite fast and yeah just give a quick wipe down sometimes the flour gets stuck to the bottom this did make a lot of batter i could have probably made like two more pans but i only really wanted to make three so i'm just kind of evenly as possible pouring them into the tins you don't want to pour all the way to the top so maybe like three quarters in I then give them a quick bash to release any air bubbles and then I get the other set of rounds that I cut out of the baking paper and just slightly press them onto the top. They can touch the batter, that's fine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put water droplets on the top of that and then I'm going to cover it with foil. That's going to create steam when the cakes are cooking and it's going to have a really nice kind of moist finish. I find this works really well for me but you know why not give it a try I guess. Anyway, about 35 minutes later they were done. Now I'm going to move on to the Swiss meringue buttercream. So I'll grab a clean bowl, clean whisk and white vinegar and wipe down my bowl and my whisk. This is just so the egg whites whip up. I've just used some pasteurized egg whites out of the carton. Make sure that they are pasteurized or you do cook them with a sugar syrup. 
I'll then put my whisk attachment on and start the speed up low to get a bit frothy and then bit by bit add in my caster sugar. You do want to continually whip this until it is at firm peak stage. So I just like to cover it with a tea towel so I don't get shit all over my kitchen. You can see here it's more like a medium consistency so it does hold a peak but it's not quite as stiff as I would like it to be. So yeah, it, it's just really as stiff as possible, I guess. This is more what I'm looking for, something that really holds its shape. And ideally, you want to be able to hold the bowl upside down above your head, throw it around the room and it won't go anywhere. I then add in my softened butter bit by bit. I just do this with a fork because I'm lazy as fuck and I don't want to cut it up. So yeah, I'm just doing that. It is a very slow process, this icing. This is half a batch, I'll make sure I include the link to the recipe, but eventually it will start to change colour and appear kind of curdled, don't worry. Keep whipping through that and eventually it will come together as a nice smooth buttercream. And this is the part where you can colour or um, kind of add flavour, I just add vanilla. So I've got my cakes nice and cool, I'm going to unwrap them and then start to trim them so I've got a big serrated knife and I'm just kind of roughly guesstimating these cakes aren't going to be um, cut in the center or anything so I'm just using one as a guide um, with the crumbs you can use for cake pops or anything like that and because I'm not going to be icing these today I'm just going to tightly wrap them up with some cling wrap and chuck them in the fridge So day two is time for Nutella ganache for the filling. So I've got some thickened cream, some Nutella and some dark chocolate chips. And again, everything will be in the description box, but I'm just starting off by breaking up the chocolate chips into little pieces. And then what I'll do is I'll put the thickened cream in the microwave, bring it to almost boiling point. When that's ready, pour it over the top of the chocolate and leave it settle for a few minutes. This is a pretty general way to make ganache. Once that's been settling for a little bit, I then grab a spatula and give it a little bit of a stir. It will eventually change colour into a nice rich chocolate. And then once it's more combined, I'll then put in the Nutella. This is more of a runnier ganache. You can set it by putting it in the fridge or adding a little bit more chocolate and vice versa. If you want to make it more runny, you just add more cream. I have a pretty interesting turntable at the moment, kind of DIY, but most importantly you'll need non-slip mat as well. These tools are pretty vital to getting a good finish on these types of cakes and I've got a cake board anywhere from you know one inch upwards, bigger than my cake size. I just prefer them quite bigger. And I've got some simple syrup which is equal parts cast sugar and water in a pot brought to the boil. And I'm going to layer that onto the cake and smooth it in with a spoon. This is just going to give us a moist finish to the cake. Ready for butter creaming. So this was out overnight just on my table. And I've got a disposable piping bag. I'll find a round tip. So this, I think this is about a 9 or a 13. Chop the end off, chuck it in the thing and fill it up for butter cream. And this isn't flavoured buttercream, this is just plain as it is, it's not too sweet or anything. Start off, I'm going to put a little dob of buttercream on the board and then I'm going to start layering my cakes. Unless you and your guests are fond of eating silicon paper, I definitely recommend making sure that you remember to peel it off. My bottom layer is a bit uneven. But I've got that down flat side first and I'm showing two different ways you could put the ganache in. So it is quite thin. So I kind of poured it on a little bit and I'm spreading it out with a small spatula. And then I will round and round and round pipe the Swiss meringue for an even layer. If your cake is cut a little bit uneven, you can just kind of make up where your unevenness is like I'm doing here. And then on to the second layer. So first of all, I'm going to pipe around the rim, around the edge of the cake. And then I'm going to kind of pour the ganache in the center and then 
repipe in a swirl. This is just a different way you can find out what works for you. This way is a bit messy, I guess, but whatever. So when it comes to your top tier, most importantly, you do want the bottom of the cake to be the top. So this is going to create a straight, even edge. And as you can see here, not everything's perfect at first, so don't stress. I'm going to try to get as even as possible, and then with my small spatula, I'm going to start kind of spreading the excess around the sides to start to fill into the gaps. I'm just adding some more buttercream in the gaps. Now, of course, this is your first coat or your crumb coat. I do want a semi-naked kind of finish, so I don't want to put too much on here. But because I'm a bit wonky and a bit not very straight, I do want to try to create as straight as possible finish. So I'm going to have to make up a little bit of it. So just scoop some buttercream on the top and then using your spatula straight and turning the turntable with your other hand, try to get a straight top as possible. This will take a few turns probably, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect at this point. Now I have my scraper. This one is by the brand Mondo. It has a straight edge, which is very important because that's going to sit flush between the corner of the bottom of the cake and your board. So you want to try to hold it as flat as possible to the board and also as straight as possible. If you start to lean, your icing will start to do that as well and then you will get an uneven finish. But of course, this is just the first layer. Don't stress if it's not particularly exactly smooth. So with a clean spatula, I'm just cutting in to the edge at the top. That's going to create that top edge giving it a final go over with my scraper and then going to chuck it straight in the fridge to chill. Once my cake has been chilling out in the fridge for a little bit and it's firm to touch, I just quickly zap some of the same buttercream in the microwave for about 10 seconds but in small intervals and I do a thick layer of buttercream around the whole cake. I just find it easier to work with when it's been microwaved, I find that it leaves a smoother finish and it's not as uh, textured and bubbly. A key to achieve straight edges is to make sure that the whole cake is covered with a thick layer of buttercream. That way when you scrape it back with the straight scraper like I am doing, you will create overhang on the top of the cake and that way you can use your smaller spatula to pull them inside and cut them clean and nice and sharp to the center of the cake. Right now I'm just starting to bring back the buttercream as I do want a semi naked finish and here I am doing the cut back at the top of the cake and making sure that everything's as straight as possible. Practice makes perfect here. You can make mistakes as you can keep adding on and taking off but it is best to try to get it as perfect as possible, as quick as possible, as you will get the best finish. Chuck it in the fridge and wait for it to cool, and then we go move on to our decorating. So going back to my Nutella ganache, I'm gonna use this for the drip. But I'm using a spoon. Some people like to use squeezy bottles or anything like that, but I just find it easier to control with a spoon. And tablespoon by tablespoon, I'm putting it on the side and then letting it drip. Right now, the texture is a little bit too firm, but as you can see, a zap in the microwave fixed that, and you can really control the amount of ganache going down the sides of the cake. Using my 1M Wilton tip, I'm going to use this with buttercream to kind of prop up my decorations. Now you can do whatever you want on the top of your cake. I mean, it's your cake, so who gives a fuck? So I've just got Oreos and Nutella and Kinder Surprise, and I really just raided my cupboard to see what I had. So yeah, you can go crazy, but I use some toothpicks to just help prop some things up, but just make sure you uh, take the toothpicks out before eating. 
Now for my favorite bit, it is gold. So just using an edible gold dust and I'm using Rose Spirit, but you can use a white alcohol such as vodka or vanilla extract. I'm using a food safe paintbrush and I am now just painting gold on. So this is my favorite part of the whole thing and I love it. So I guess this is it. Uh, if you guys would like to see more of this kind of stuff on my channel or if you have any other kind of suggestions or anything, then let me know and I will gladly continue to produce these videos for you as it gives me an excuse to get in the kitchen and to get chocolate everywhere. So yeah, thanks for watching.